Hey guys, it's Misty with Mystic Gigi. Today we're going to be playing with epoxy resin and we're going to be making a coaster set and a, um, what do you call it, a platter, like a cutting board platter, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Anyways, I'm using this epoxy and it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so you mix one part um, A and one part B together, equal amounts. All the resin's different though, so make sure you read the directions and make sure you have proper um, gloves, respirator, ventilation, you know, know all the rule, know all the safety things before you play with resin. Um, so I'm just showing you how many, much ounces I'm making. I'm making like four, 14 ounces um, because I need quite a bit for what I'm doing. So I will mix the resin, and when you mix it, you mix it for five minutes. Most resins, I don't, I've really never seen any resins that are less than four to five minutes. Um, I do five minutes, even if it says three, just to be safe. Um, and you want to make sure you mix it so, so, so good. Like mix it really well, scrape the sides, scrape the stick, mix, mix, mix. And, um, don't whip it like a like you're beating eggs because it'll cause it to have more bubbles, but don't stress over the bubbles. Don't stress over it. I see so many people that are completely stressing over the bubbles even after they put it in their mold or whatever. Just don't stress over the don't stress over it. It will they will go away as long as you properly keep either applying heat or your heat gun or your torch with molds. I do not recommend using a torch because it will ruin your mold. I've done it, <laughs> but um, so just don't stress over the bubbles. Just make sure you mix it well, and then worry about the bubbles later. Just just mix it like normal. Don't beat it. Just stir, 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 stir. <laughs> and try to like not look at the clock while you're doing it because it does take a minute. So I'm gonna let you guys. I'm gonna fast forward it through the uh, mixing just so that I don't bore you to death. Or feel free to fast forward if you already know this part. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm going with like fire colors. So I'm going with crimson and then, so red, reddish pink, an orange, a yellow, and a black, the blackest black, oxide black. <laughs> um, so you can use any, any pigments, anything. You can even use paint. The only thing with paint though, is it makes your epoxy cure way faster than using what is for resin. So resin paste, um, pigments, resin dyes, anything in that family that makes it colored. Um, the paint does fasten the drying time, or the curing time. Um, so I'm just putting each, I put about a, about a teaspoon of pigment in each cup and literally that stuff goes a long way. You don't need much. You just need a little bit and it goes for a lot of epoxy. Um, also, I always make a little bit extra just in case because it is more of a pain to go back and make another batch while you're trying to get your design going in your epoxy because it's time sensitive because you have to work fast. So it's better to have too much than not enough because in my opinion. But um, also there's a resin calculator that you can use. Just Google it um, and you can put in the square footage or square inches of your um, mold and it'll tell you how many ounces or how many whatever of epoxy that you need. So if you want to be dead on accurate, go Google the resin calculator. 
Um, also, I'm wanting to go for more of a blended design. So I'm going to lay it down in, um, in a pattern um, and then just go from there. So also, um, when you're stirring it in, again, don't worry about bubbles. We're going to deal with those later. Because um, as it's sitting, when you're as you're working, it's releasing bubbles as you're as it's sitting in the cup. But also right here, after I stir them, I pour it into another cup because if you have too much resin in a cup, it starts to heat it up faster and it cures faster. So what you want to do is you want to just basically have the least amount in a cup that you can. So I split this these cups into littler cups just so I have more control too because they're plat the these ones don't pinch at the corner so you can have control over your pouring. So I put them in the little Dixie cups that you can pinch to control the design better. So that's another reason why I use those cups, but I needed that amount. So I mixed it in those size cups and then split it into littler cups. It doesn't matter what cups you use, you can use whatever you want, but I prefer the disposable because I I don't know why, but it is really hard for me to clean silicone out. It doesn't like me. <laughs> so I just use disposable. But you can reuse the disposables also. You just wait till the resin cures and you peel it out. So that's what I usually do. So I'm just going to stir these up, mix them up. Feel free to fast forward if you want. Um, I will just finish stirring these up and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so now I got my um, silicone molds that I'm going to be using. I got these from Molds and Shapes. You look it up on Facebook, you just type in the search bar Molds and Shapes, Molds and Shapes, and you they have a Facebook thing where you look at their what they have for sale and then you just message them and they'll you purchase it through Facebook and then they send it to you. They're really decently priced and they're really good molds. So um, what I'm going to be doing is just pouring a thin line of the black along all the outsides and then um, I'll just layer the colors like that. I'm doing, it's better to do less at the beginning just so that you don't overfill your molds and then you can always add more as you go. You'll notice I do that. Um, I don't know if you guys prefer me to speed this up just because it's, you know, pretty tedious. It's the same thing over and over again. Um, so I think I will speed it up for you and just let you watch. And if you do have any questions, please leave them below. I'm more than happy to help. Um, if there's something that you want to see, I'm pretty sure I've done it. I've There's really nothing I haven't done in this uh, fluid art and resin world. <laughs> um, so please just reach out. I'm more than happy to help. Also, if you like the video, please hit that like button and share it if you want to share it. And please subscribe to my channel if you're not yet subscribed. I would appreciate it. And I will uh, just let you watch. Thank you guys.
also just a quick little um, tip. Make sure, make sure, make sure that your level, your table's level and your molds, because if they're not, you will have a disaster. Just saying, I've done it. So make sure level, everything is level before you start pouring your resin. Just thought I'd give you that good tip because I learned the hard way. <laughs>
So as you've noticed, I have my um, molds sitting on trays. These are just like regular like um, eating trays like that you have at takeout restaurants um, that they give you your food on. So I just got them off Amazon. They make a perfect uh, setup because you can put your mold on it and then your mold doesn't bend and stuff if you need to move it. It makes a perfect level object to move your mold around so that you can have space to do whatever else you need to get done but you can pour them in one spot and then move them just make sure those spots are level if they're not level it's going to defeat the purpose <laughs> so just make sure the spot's level anyways i will let you keep watching but if you have not yet subscribed please subscribe it's free and it helps me out um, and by the way if anybody doesn't know what that is that is a label tag so it's just a fun little extra that their molds have some of them so that's what that is and then um, on the traditional um, platter itself normally I would put handles on it but this one I wanted to not put handles on it I'm going to do something different with it I'm not sure what yet but and then the step after this is any of the molds that have like a rough edge I'm going to sand it down and then put a floating layer on the top, meaning I'm just going to put enough on the top to where it does not flow over the edges, but it fills in any of the difference in height, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it's hard to talk about it and not show you what I'm talking about. Um, but it's called a flood coat. Anyways, if you're interested in that, um, just YouTube it. It's pretty simple um, to do. But if it doesn't need it, you don't have to do another coat on them. They can be done. Just sand off the little bumpies that you see on the edges or take them off with your finger like I just did. Um, just sand up some spots and make them perfect and then they're ready to go. Um, but after this stage, after you take them out of the mold, just because they're hard doesn't mean they're cured all the way. You do need to let resin cure anywhere. But to, uh, I always, just to be safe, up to 30 days before you put anything on them, before you mell them, before you do anything that could potentially damage them, I wait at least 30 days after they're out of the stage and make sure you store them flat so they don't end up curling or going not flat. <laughs> There's a lot of things that you need to be careful with with epoxy because even though it's the hard to touch, to the touch does not mean that they can't be get ruined from the stage. So make sure they're always laying flat and let them cure for at least 30 days. You can embellish them and do whatever you want in the meantime. Just make sure you're not like putting bubble wrap on them to mail them because you'll leave the bubble wrap imprints on the uncured epoxy. Um, just different things. So to be safe, let them cure for 30 days before you ship them or give them to somebody so that they don't have that chance of getting ruined in that 30 days to where you have to redo them. So it saves you money if you just take all the precautions to begin with. All right, and then I put little rubber feet on the bottom of them so that they can actually sit as a coaster without moving. Instead of the um, cork backing or anything else, I put little rubber feet on these particular ones. But a lot of times I just set them in the package with them so that they can choose which side they wanna use because you know what side we wanna use because <laughs> we make them. But some people like the bottoms better than the tops and it really doesn't matter which side you use. It's more of whatever you wanna, whatever side you wanna use. There's no difference. The only difference is whatever side you put the feet on, the little rubber feet. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the description below. I will let you finish watching. And I hope you have a fabulous day, and I hope this was helpful to people that want to get into resin or are looking to try resin, whatnot. Always do your homework on it, though, because it's a lot more than just, hey, let me put a resin coat on my painting, or let me just do some coasters. It's a lot more work than that, and just the equipment alone on things to do epoxy is a whole whole nother object in itself <laughs> so just do your homework before you get into something and before you use stuff especially things like resin because it is dangerous and you have to be careful with it all right guys thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support and i will talk to you next time thanks guys